Hello everyone, George here, and we're back again with my implementation of uh, ToeJam and Earl in VR. So we kind of got a lot of individual pieces done, and it's about time maybe that we step into Unity and start fleshing out some, uh, some of these systems and at least seeing how they're going to work together. Now, I don't want to spend a bunch of time replicating work I've already done. If you've watched the Five Nights at Freddy's series, you know that I already have a class called Vive Input, and basically that's just a class that goes through and routes all of the different inputs, as you see here, to different delegates that we can subscribe to, or excuse me, events that we can subscribe to through the delegates that get created. Um, and it's just a very simple class that I already put together. All it does is go through and maps everything for us so I don't actually need to do any kind of work. Now, the only thing I will need to do is I need to go and grab the input manager from this particular class and import it into my project so that I don't have to spend a bunch of time entering in each of these different input things by myself. So let's go ahead and make this work. So first off, let's go ahead and grab Vive input, copy that, Bring it on over here into our project. Let's open that up in Explorer. And then under Assets, let's just create a new folder called Scripts. And then let's go ahead and paste that in there. And then the next thing we need to do is, I'm trying to remember exactly where it is. If it's under Library, maybe? But underneath here is my Input Manager someplace. So let's see here. Um, can we just do, let's see, if we do Input. There we go, input manager. So that's under reproduce. Uh, can we get the full path? I, I hate how they don't show the full path. Can we just open this open file location, please? So there's input ma manager dot asset under Toji Mineral project settings. Therefore, we need to come over to my other project and go under its project settings and copy the same thing. So coming over here, let's go to project settings and input manager, copy that, copy and paste over here, replace. Come back in here, see what happens. Let's go over now to our input manager. So edit, project settings, input, axes. And now you'll notice we have Lcon menu button, right? L Rcon menu button and everything else that should be mapped to the, uh, the HTC Vive. Now at the moment, I don't have my HTC Vive hooked up to my computer. And if I try to do that while I'm recording a video, most likely everything's gonna go horribly wrong with how inputs get mapped and audio and all kinds of stuff. So we're, in the next video, we'll actually jump into running it and making everything work. In this one, let's start getting some of the systems in place that are gonna make everything actually work. So we can come over here and we have our models and we have our presence, our elevator and our ship piece, but it looks like I did not export out the um, ground plane. So let's go ahead and do that really fast. And I actually made a huge mistake. And if we go into presence really fast, you're going to notice it's the ground plane um, because I went and saved. So we're going to have to re-import those FBX objects back in here at some point so that we can make everything work. And actually, maybe we should do that very fast. So let's go in here really quick. Um, let's delete the landscape object and let's go ahead and go to file and import, so let's see, import, and then we're going to import in under the ToeJ Mineral VR assets and models presence, and we want to import in each of these FBX files. So present file import. Once again, this is just because I made a mistake. So did that import in the Icarus wings? Because I don't, anyone else not see Icarus wings? I see the group, I don't see the actual object. And see, this is probably because the names are the same. And when I import them in, you can see here that we've got a whole bunch of exceptions going on. Oh, no, actually, no, those are, those are all fine. Now, if we go to file, import, and I load in anyone else, see it's it, it the groups by itself. But the problem is the names are the same. And this is such an annoying little bug with FBXs, and I don't really, want to do this individually. Can I, let's see, import, and it still does not work. Yeah, that, see, there it is right there. This is annoying. You know what, we're just gonna wait on that until we actually have to do something. So let's go ahead to the landscape, don't save, and uh, make these work. So we've got the this one here, and then we've got four by four horizontal. And let's just, if I move this here, that should work. Okay, so we've got both of those two. I think I can use the horizontal to go both up and down. Um, so really, I think we have everything we need. So let's go ahead, grab both of these, modify, freeze transforms, 
And if freeze transforms would like to show up someplace, there we go. Now let's go ahead and export these out and bring this over here. And we have presence. We're going to do up a level and up another level. Assets, models, and then we'll do a new folder and just call this terrain. And then we'll just call this, uh, which one do we have selected first? Uh, we have landscape, horizontal, four by four. Please verify the correct oh, directory. That's right. Control X, choose name, export. Okay. Grab U. Instead of horizontal, I think we call this what? Slanted and export. Okay. Jumping back over here, we should now have our terrain elements. So we can grab one of these, bring it in here, and there it is. And it looks like it fits just right. And then if we're lucky, we can uh, control D this. And now I want to snap this. So I should be able to just say four if I had numlock on. And that will match right there. And then we've got our rock cragginess that's going on. Um, great. So let's make this into a prefab. So we're going to grab the object. Let's add a collider. Do a box collider. And of course, it doesn't understand what that is. So let's come over here, add a box collider to the lower part of it and copy that element and then remove it. Come up here and paste those values. And then all we need to do now is um, let's go over here to the collider, edit it and bring this down, something like that. Okay. So let's go ahead. So we have models and then we probably want to have a folder called prefabs. And under there, we can grab our guy here with our stuff set up, bring it under there and let's probably create another folder called terrain and stick this under there. Now the, the landscape vertical is going to cause a problem, in which case we might need to create our own custom um, thing because that's the slanted one right there. And if we were to say bring this over to here and give that a negative four in size, um, we need something to allow that to go up that slope. Um, and a standard box collider or any of these other colliders, except for a mesh collider, just is not going to do it. Now we could throw down a mesh collider on top of this, but it's probably better for us to remove this for now. Go back into Maya. Uh, let's hide out the horizontal one very fast and create a new collider off this object. So we're gonna grab grass top, duplicate that, bring it out. Come on. Too many different programs, too many hotkeys, getting confused. So let's do land, so let's do C underscore landscape underscore slanted underscore four by four. So C standing for collider. And all we need to do for this is take really um, this bottom face, if we can select it easily. It's gonna be somewhere under here or not. Let's try that again. Uh, F8, come on, it's like right there. Unless, did I delete the, I think I deleted the bottom of this, didn't I? Yeah, it looks like I did. So what we're gonna do instead is just grab this edge, pull this down to here, right click edge, and then grab this whole thing and do a fill hole. And that pretty much gets all of that geometry just fine. And we, with this, we can go to file, um, game exporter, and then we'll call this C underscore slanted, blah, 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 blah. We'll export this under the terrain as well. Come back into Unity now. And with that, we should be able to go to our mesh slanted, add a mesh collider right there. And then we should be able to select the correct mesh, which is going to be our C. And that lines up just fine with what we want. Okay, so now I've got our collider. Let's go ahead and add this to our list of prefabs under terrain slanted and there we go okay so we've got our two elements now that will let us actually uh, start building up our world now i believe if we go to window package manager i believe there's a grid 
one we can use that's going to help us place so we have pro grids right so let's go ahead and install pro grids okay so now we have pro grids and now bear with me it's been a very long time since i've used pro grids so let's bring up the window um let's see snap value one i believe scale angle 45 so, you know, the angle I'm going to make for 90 degrees. I want to make this every four units done. And that's almost okay. Now, I believe there's one of these is to snap. So guidelines, toggle snapping. So we're going to turn that on. And actually, we're going to turn that off very quickly. And we're going to actually, you know what? No, I think I think we're okay. Because I can duplicate this, right? And just, there we go. So now we can snap this and we can start making our layout for our virtual world. Now that's a problem right there. So the vertical, so let's make this instead of four, what about two? I think that's what this is. So even two is not correct. So let's delete that element very quick. And we might need to go back in and, and revise this mesh. See, it's not snapping just perfect. So the height is a little bit off. So coming back over here into Maya, let's uh, hide the collider one really fast and bring these back. And then what we want to do is see what's going on with the top of this mesh. So let's go to display, show, show selected. And I'm going to duplicate this object, move it over there, and I'm going to move this up. So we can see right there the issue is two units up and we have that as our problem, which means we're going to need to adjust these verts on this side of this object. So we can grab all of these, hit WDV, move that there, move this over here, move that down there, and now that should line up just fine. Now, because we did that, our collider is going to be a little messed up as well. So let's grab this, delete that. We have this object now, which is correct. So let's go ahead and go to File and Export, Game Exporter, and then we'll do, do Slanted and hit Export. Yes, that's fine, okay. Now let's go ahead and bring our collider back in. So uh, display, show, selected. And we just need to, let's go to x-ray really fast. And we just need to grab these two elements up here, this one and this one, and snap them to that right there. And then we can go ahead and put a C under here, grab our collider, export that out, say yes to that as well, hit OK. Come back over here, and then you'll see that magically snap back to where it's supposed to be. So we're good there. And with that, we should now be able to start designing our level layout. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time right now on the layout. I'm just going to put a couple pieces down so we have enough to navigate around. So we'll do something like this. And just so that there's something to move around with. Because we also have to have our elevator, right? Now, actually, you know what? Maybe we should do this. Control D this and then move this one up and then move this up. And here we go. So control D, control D, D. Not the most fun, I know, but it is what it is. OK, so we've got two different pathways to get up there. And actually, let's take both of these elements now and move them somewhere like that. So there we go. OK, so now we've got our world little bit of a seam issue right there. I'm kind of worried about that. So I'm guessing the bottom doesn't quite perfectly line up, although it just might be an artifact of the shadows. So we'll, well, it, eh, you know what, it's not a big issue. Let's, let's just not worry about it right now. Okay, so we've got our models. So we've got our elevator. So let's go ahead and grab our elevator and throw that up here. So there it is. Now you'll notice that the Z axis is all kinds of wonky. So there's our pivot. Yeah, so we need to go back and re-export this object out. So what are we under right now? We're under landscape still. So let's save that. Let's go over to open. And now is where we have some fun fixing all of our problems. So let's go up to scenes and then elevator. Whoops, wrong one. File, open, elevator. Don't save. And here's our elevator. But you'll notice that the that's it's down the X axis. So what we want to do is take this object and rotate it 90 degrees like that. And then we'll take the uh, modify freeze transforms, apply that, and then we'll go to file game exporter. And then we will find this particular object. So let's go up and we're going to want to do elevator. So I'm just going to grab that name really fast. Okay. 
and we'll do elevator, export, save, okay. Coming back up here now, now it's flipped around to the right way. We can rotate this now to the front side and we'll do 90 degrees there. Now we probably want another two of these. So we're gonna duplicate these really fast. Move them back here then grab the elevator and just kind of shove it somewhere around there. And you know, this lighting scenario isn't very fun for me. So we're going to kind of do it this way, something like that. Okay, so we've got our elevator. We've got uh, some terrain. We also need our ship piece. So we might as well go ahead and add that off to the side here. And then we can grab like these over here, move them off to here. Although maybe we can do this instead. So rotate that negative 180. I'm gonna grab this one, bring it around to the other side. Yeah, something like this. And then let's duplicate that, duplicate this again. And then we can go over to our, so actually let's create a new group and call this landscape. Grab all of our landscapes so far and shove it underneath that group just so that it's under one thing. Great. Now let's go ahead and grab our ship piece sign which we can just kind of shove over here. Now, once again, check it out. Our ship piece sign is uh, oriented along the wrong axis. So let's go ahead and fix that very quickly. Save this, file open scene, ship pieces, and let's grab this. And this needs to be rotated 90 degrees, not quite like that, more like this. So negative 90, just one negative would be good. And then this entire piece too needs to be rotated a negative 90, grab both of these, modify, freeze, transform, hit apply, close, and let's save this out. And now let's go ahead and do our exporting. So game exporter, find this particular file, and this is gonna go up. And let's see, we are doing the left megawatt speaker. So let's grab that, hit export, hit yes, successful. Now let's go ahead and grab our ship piece sign. I want to grab that name again, ship piece sign, control C, cancel, paste, get rid of the FBX, hit export, yes, okay. And with that, if we come back over here now, these will reorient themselves properly. So now this object just needs to be rotated 90 degrees like that. And we should be we're good there. And now we just need the left megawatt speaker which we can place right there. Now let's see, that is correct as well. So we just need to rotate that 90 degrees and place this, uh, let's turn off snapping for a second here and let's just do, I believe, um, let's see, we're just gonna kind of hover it up there, I think. Cause really I think you're gonna hit the sign and then you're gonna get whatever object happens to be there. Uh, for you to actually work with. So let's just move this over a little bit and down. Something like that. Okay, so there's our beginning level. So we've got uh, some terrain, we've got our elevator, and we've got the uh, megawatt speaker. So now we just need to make these things actually work. Uh, we also need to add presence, so we might as well add a little side area for that as well. Before we do that, let's turn snapping back on. And I'm just going to put a little area over here with the present. And let's just grab one of these. So we have Fudge Sunday, Icarus Wings. Fudge Sunday is probably going to be the easiest one to implement. So let's go ahead and just place that over here. You'll notice the planes are a little bit messed up. Let's not worry too much about that at the moment. Let's rotate this 90 degrees just so it's facing the right direction. Okay, and we've got a present. All right, so with that, now we just need to, I guess, create our prefabs. So let's go ahead and create a new folder, call these presents, and we can work with this first present. So let's go ahead and minimize that landscape. Now, did that, did that go under landscape? No, it did not. Where's our, so we have ship piece, we have left, we have present fudge Sunday. So present fudge Sunday, we're gonna do just a box collider on that. 
There we are. Um, let's see. That did not understand the right size, so let's go ahead to the body of this thing, add a box collider, copy the components, and remove the component, then come up to the top, and paste those values so it's close to what it should be. Though it's not quite what I want, that's for sure. Let's go ahead and adjust this manually now. So I'm going to grab that again. Let's try this again here. So this is right there. I'm going to move that up to, yeah, that's about right. And then we'll move this one up to, say, right about there. And then really this should be a little bit thicker to, ac to account for the sides of the present. And then this can come out a little bit. And this can come out a little bit over here as well. Okay. Now we're going to need to have a character. Like I said at the moment, I don't have my Vive hooked up, but that doesn't mean we don't have to set everything up. Uh, let's go ahead and start creating that character. So we have a main camera right here. We're going to need a body for it. So let's just make a new object, call this body. And then we can take our main camera and shove it under the body. Our main camera, we're going to zero out. Make sure that's all good. That's fine too. So then we have our body. Let's make sure that's zeroed out as well. And so that's our body over here. We're going to move this to somewhere over here. That's good enough. Let's go ahead and rotate our body 90 degrees. And then our body is going to need hands. So let's go ahead and create two new empty game objects. So we'll do one. What is it? A control alt and what is it? Game object, create empty, alt, shift, and N. So alt, shift, that's not the easiest button press, but that's fine. So we have that, so we'll do uh, hand L, and then hand right, and great. So we are going to need 3D models for the hands. We don't have them yet, but we'll eventually get them at some point. They're going to be mapped directly to the Vive controllers themselves. Um, we're going to need a script for each hand that's going to be doing things with the controller. What those are is probably going to be you're going to intersect different objects with the hands and then make things happen. Therefore, these are going to need uh, colliders. So we'll do sphere colliders on both. And they're also going to need rigid bodies. Now the rigid bodies are not going to use gravity. They will be kinematic because we're going to be using the Vive itself to control their location. Things like mass and whatnot don't really matter. I'm going to do collision detection, continuous dynamic, just to deal with the fact that they are going to be moving around. Uh, and I don't know how quickly, but you know, relatively quick compared to a human being. Now there's also the is trigger part of this, and we might want to turn that on. I'm going to turn that on tentatively right now. I'm not exactly 100% sure. The other thing is the size of the radius, which are huge. They are half a meter for each hand. We're going to probably crank this down to maybe 0 0.2. Um, and we'll, we'll play it by ear on exactly whether or not that works correctly. Now for our main camera, we're also going to have to eventually enable VR mode and make that all set up properly, but that's not something I want to do just yet. The camera itself is going to be updated automatically, although you'll notice that main camera does not have the tag main camera, so let's make sure that has that just in case we want to use that in the future. Um, we will, on the other hand, need a script for hand L and hand R. So under scripts, I think I'm going to create a new folder and just call this Vive. And all the Vive stuff will go under there. So let's go ahead here and uh, let's create a new script. I'm just going to call it hand L and hand R. Uh, I'll make hand or you'll do uh, hand L is fine. It doesn't really matter. We'll start with hand L and then we'll do hand R after this. Okay, so hand L is right here. Uh, what we're going to need to do is grab the tracker information um, from the Vive through VR input and move this object wherever is necessary. Um, now, whether or not we do that in update or late update, I'm not exactly sure the best place to do it. So for right now, why don't we just do it in update? So let's create a new function called void update position orientation. It's going to take zero parameters and it's going to get called inside of update. So that's fine. And then inside of this, we're going to want to mess with uh, the open VR stuff. So I'm trying to remember if I have to do a using Unity engine dot, is there a VR? Yes. Okay, so we'll do that. Or is it MR now? Or 
XR. There is XR. So let's uh, jump into the Unity documentation really quick. So Unity, uh, XR, um, manual. This is not what I want. I don't want this crap. Well, maybe I do. I don't know. Open VR. We'll, we'll do open VR. So all I want to do is I want to grab. So see documentation, open VR controller. That's controller mapping. That's not what I want. Uh, player settings. That's fine. We'll do that. We'll do that as well in the future. Now, I want to grab the individual XR settings, uh, device dot model, device family. I believe it's input tracking. So we can get the local position and the local rotation of a specific node. And we want to make sure we have the correct node when we're doing this. And that's going to be the left hand and the right hand. So somewhere in here, it should tell me which node is which. So get local position. We need to specify xr.xr node. OK, so we will do a uh, get local. Let's see, what is this under? This is under input tracking. So input tracking dot get local position. And then with that, we need to pass in uh, XR, XR node dot. And then we want to grab this is going to be the left hand. And then we're also going to do input tracking dot get local rotation. And then we'll do XR node dot left hand. And then we just need to specify this as being the um, the right hand, the, you know, the right one and the left one. So technically, we could have made one script called hand and then had this be the enum that we pass in. But if we want to have different functionality for each hand, technically, that's not the best way. And it's too early to tell at this point. So we might as well just make both classes and go along with it. So this will be this dot transform dot um, uh, local position is equal to this transform dot local position. And then this should be this dot transform dot local rotation is going to be equal to that as well. OK. So that's perfect for now. Uh, we're going to basically duplicate this script and uh, do the exact same thing again for the right hand. So let's go ahead and close this. Right click, create C sharp script and R. And yes, we could if we wanted to create a, just a hand script and have L and R inherit from it and then have this functionality in the base class, which would always function. And then we could uh, override that or implement new functionality if you wanted to do object oriented programming. But we're not going to be doing that at the moment. So we're just going to paste this here. And then instead of left hand, we're going to do right hand, copy you, copy you. And we're going to use it using Unity engine dot XR. All right. So with that, we now uh, we haven't tested it yet, but we're going to grab our left hand, put that on the left hand, grab the right hand, put that on the right hand. And we're also going to go in here really fast and just add a empty object. So let's do a cube for one hand and then we'll do a sphere for the other hand just so we can make sure we have the right ones set up. And then the cube itself, we're just going to change its scale to like 0 0.2, 0 0.2. If we had numlock on, 2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And then once again, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. So something small like that. So each hand is, is different than the other one. All right. So with that, I think, uh, let's see, we're at the 30 minute mark. So I want to make sure that these don't go too long. I think with that, we have enough. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to hook up my Vive. Although before that, I need to charge all the controllers and make sure all that stuff's working. But I will hook up my Vive and then we will do a test on uh, making sure the hands work. And then we're probably going to implement basic locomotion in the game so we can move around using a character controller. And then from there, we're going to then dive into being able to pick up these different objects and access them and, and so forth and so on. Anyway, everyone, I will see you next time. So long and goodbye. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, remember to subscribe and hit the bell if you want notifications about new videos I upload. And if you'd like to help even more, consider becoming a patron on my Patreon account. Links, as always, are in the description. See you next time. So long. Goodbye.